what I'm about to say here is not a criticism of conducting or looking at measurements. Um, we conduct measurements on this channel, and so this is not one of those videos that just sort of dismisses measurements and says, you know, don't trust measurements, you know, uh, trust subjectivists. I'm selling all my Chinese decks. So I'm selling all my Chinese decks. And I don't really like selling. I love reviewing gear, I love the stuff, but I, it frustrates me when I see no innovation happening for a big length of time. And I'm talking about the redundancy in the Chinese stacks. And I think I'm not the only one that feels this way, but I can tell you from experience as someone who has reviewed multiple stacks of a similar quality, that these things seem to be from the same factory, if not neighboring factories. And it doesn't take a genius to find that out because of the packaging of the unit itself and the remote. For example, this is SMSL and Topping Remote. If they didn't have the logo here, they look almost identical, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And I'll be always confused which one is which. And can we talk about the UI system for a minute? Meaning like the menu system. They all have these little small screens that seem to display the same things. Some has maybe EQ, maybe a little bit of um, extra you know, music playing capability like the SMSL DP5 for a little bit extra dollar. So add minus some functions, they seem to have the same menu system with the same useless filters. And by filters, I'm talking about like the slow, fast, you know, firewall, whatever brick wall, they come up all the same names. Okay, so actually with these units, the menu system is uh, as different as it gets. So this, it gets more similar than this that I'm showing you here. So here we have the Guster. And if I press here, you see the filters? Slow, sharp, super slow, long, slow, whatever. Right, you see, you see it. Now check this out. Go to this one, the Lux G. And with the filters, sharp, slow, short, slow, sharp, super slow, super sharp. Yep. Really, it doesn't take a genius to find out that these companies may be linked somehow. Now, I'm not talking about Denafrips or R2R based DAX or Tube DAX that are very unique. Those are different, those sound different, they have their own place in the market. I'm talking about DAX that seem to have very similar features, very similar input output, very similar sound, and almost no difference. Like, why would I, as a consumer, buy SMSL instead of topping. I'm here to tell you there is almost no difference as to why. Like you could go topping or SMSL and you wouldn't be losing or winning. Don't get me wrong here. DAX, especially Chinese DAX, have come a long way. Like they're incredibly good for the money. I'm not saying that they sound bad. They sound really good. They've done a great job. But my complaint with Chinese DAX have always been that they're chasing after measurements. I mean, look at the spec papers here again. Redundancy. All the DAX seem to have very similar spec pages with MQA and whatever, whatever the latest and greatest thing they can find, you know, in marketing. And look, I'm not saying that standardization is not a good thing. It is good to have standards. But it so seems that it's not so much about the standards as much as it is chasing after what the neighbor is doing, if you know what I mean. And this has been a growing trend in the Chinese market for a while now, and it's no secret. Like if that manufacturer is doing it, I should do it too because he's clearly doing something right. And that goes with stuff like MQA or chasing after the next and greatest stack chip. And the problem is that there's so many models now that gets confusing and at times they are really not that different from their previous generation. It's just that the DAC chip is newer and they promise all these great things. In reality, when it translates to actual sound performance, there is not much difference and sometimes it's actually a downgrade if anything because the UI system is still shit and the preamp section is still shit. And these are things that they should have improved but instead they spent that money in getting the new chip instead. And I'm saying that that is really not what we should be looking at. And I'm also not saying that having measurements like a standardized measurement is not a good thing. Of course, having a standardized measurement is a good thing. 
However, a lot of the measurements they are standardizing and kind of putting on paper that they're all doing is kind of measurements that doesn't really matter. And for the longest time, I've been saying that cyanide is not a very good indication of sound quality. And I'm not gonna go into the technical reasons as to why, because quite frankly, Andrew from The Headphone Show has already made a video that I was watching in the beginning of the video, uh, of this video, in fact, that seems to explain it perfectly for, for people to easily understand. And in fact, there has been many scientific papers published indicating why cyanide is not a good indication of, you know, quality, sound quality. So I'll link to those in the link description below if you're interested in finding out why cyanide is not something that manufacturers should chase. Yet again, manufacturers like SMSL, Topping, Gustard, you name it, seem to be going for that cyanide number. You know, highest achievable, no, best number possible. And you pay more for that number. While I think that the preamp capability is actually complete shit. I quite frankly think that the UI should improve over time, the sound should become unique, and I'll give you an example of that in a minute, because they didn't totally fail there, and the preamp capability or pre-outs for subwoofers, for example, features that people actually need and improve on those features, because the DAC already is very, very good and capable. That's my personal thought. Maybe differentiate yourself from other brands like SMSO and Topping seems like one brand now at this point. And no, this is not a review of individual units because quite frankly, you know, I don't want to be talking about little differences between that and this. Like for example, the Gustard using AKM DAC chips having a little bit of a warmer sound than the SMSO and the Topping. Like if I'm going to do a review, I want it to be meaningful for the viewers to actually look at the product and go like, oh, there's a meaningful change between this brand and that brand, and I should make a, you know, a choice based on that difference. Here, the difference is so small that it's not even worth mentioning for the most part. I mean, if I were to describe the UI of the topping versus the SMSL and the sound, it will be almost the same wordings, the same thing, it might as well be the same review. So that's why it's not going to be an re entire review, but more so um, a challenge, if you so will, or you know, call for innovation for Chinese products in the future. And for you guys to be aware that whether you buy Topping, SMSL, Lux G, Gustard, you really can't go wrong. They're all good DACs, just find the right inputs and outputs that you require, and the features that you really, really want, like EQ, for example, is on the Lux G. And they're all listed on the websites. There's no reason for me to repeat these things. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's why I'm selling all these stacks. And I probably won't be reviewing or accepting reviews, you know, review units that is, you know, that seems redundant. All right, Dijun, why do you have a light bulb in a candle holder? Mm, I don't know. It's a Korean influence. It's apparently in trend. <laughs> okay, okay. In all honesty, like you got to try all the decks that we're talking about today. So what's your impression of them? The Logi D50 was my absolute favorite. It was basically a clone of the SMSL M400 that you did a review on about two years ago. It's functional, I love the build, the remote was good, and it sounds good. All right, so your favorite was the uh, Lux G? Yeah, it was. Oh, actually, so one of the reasons that I started this whole video, right, is because of your comment. Like when I first gave you the Lux G to try, your first comment was like, Jay, this is like a knockoff version of the SMS M400 in a more affordable body. Right? I mean, it's the exact same body. It's just right. more affordable. And I was like, dude, that is crazy. Right. Yeah. And after receiving it, you know, I mean, it's exactly the same. So that's what got me to start this whole thing. But you know, in the time frame from, you know, beginning of like the Topping D90 review. There's been so now. many DACs that have released. Exactly. And, you know, I, I I love the fact that how good these DACs are for the money now, right? Mm. Don't get us wrong. Like they, they're great for the money. Like we didn't have this a few years back, but it's just... Are they different? Yeah, we came, we hit a threshold. I feel like we hit a threshold where it's just like, great right the sound quality is great but then they're all doing the same thing it's like a me too company 
And then now we're starting to see companies like Luxie that we've not really heard before kind of coming up with models that are slightly cheaper models that are exactly the same thing. And I think for SMSL or leading brands like Topping to kind of step up the game, they should come up with more stuff. A prime example is like the, uh, what was the model? VMV and, D1SE? Yeah, the D1SE. So SMSL released a uh, DAC um, a reference line and I'll link to that review in the link description below but we really like that one because that one has something called a sound profile which is different from the filter options that's given to you mm -hmm. and those actually made a difference like you were surprised yeah I know I remember switching through the actual sound profiles and yeah. you're like oh and you were able to guess them like yeah. blind guess which profile was what well you too you were yeah. you could tell like you know which was like you know which one you preferred so uh, anyways, we'll link to that video in the description below. But again, that's a little bit more expensive. And mm -hmm. given that, you know, I, I, the preamp section was still kind of like yucky. And that's like one of my prime concerns. Like all these DACs here, like their preamp is... And although the DAC performance was mm -hmm. basically similar with all three models, yeah. some of them were just bad. Like yeah. the SMSL DP5, when you gave that to me, when yeah. I asked, hey, Jay, I need a DAC. Yeah. And you gave it to me and I was like, ooh, I don't know about this. <laughs> and it's basically like a streamer kind of, but also like just an audio player, like a digital audio player for desktop use. Yeah, that doesn't really work I hated well. it. This is so wobbly. And like the power button. Yeah. Where is it? Exactly. So like there's this one big LED light that you would expect it to be a power light. It's the exact same one on the Log GD50. Yeah, but it's not. It's it's the power button is somewhere you wouldn't expect it to be. It was the only DAC that I actually had to read the manual to actually turn it on. Yeah, and it goes, the UI is the same way. Like you would have to go through the manual and you still would be confused after that. And so that's like my point. Like, it's like I a half-assed innovation for yeah, me. Yeah, and I, exactly. And that goes with my point. Like I feel like they should improve on the UI, like the future products and try to do something innovative like the VMV D1SC, mm -hmm. right? Something that is unique like I would prefer the D D1 VM sorry VMV D1 SC above any of these. And it's not like there's not any other companies innovating on the DAC market. Like look at Burson. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. have decent preamps in yeah. their DACs. Burson's like like Burson's. And it's not like they're using different chips or a different architecture. Like they're still using off the shelf DACs. Yeah, and one but more, the sound is completely different. They're completely different, and the, I mean the chassis is different, the build quality is different. You're they're using op amps, you know, interchangeable op amps. Anyways, we'll link to Burston reviews in the description below as well. But like the preamp section is great, and that's what I want to see from these companies because at this point they're kind of doing the you know whatever. Just cram as many features as you can yeah. for that value perspective, but yeah. don't do them really well. Well, Except for the DAX. Well, not, not, even, not even cram features. I feel like the, they even hit that threshold with the feature thing. I feel like it's now like, oh, look, this is the new chip, like AKM4499. Well, you know what the DAC I'm using at home? The Army. Yeah. And that's an older chip, but I still prefer the sound of it. Yeah, so that's like, you know, shit audio or, um, you know, Doge audio, you know, all off the sh shelf chips, my Matrix audio, but they, make stuff that's more unique, right? Matrix stuff, again, I'm not like a fan. I think we made that clear. Mm -hmm. Like I just don't get the unit, right? Like I don't understand how I would use that um, as just a streamer, right? It's more of a DAC. But even then, it has its, it has its own, own appeal. It has its own sound. It's a different DAC. These just, it's kind of like a Me Too. It's a, it's a cookie cutter DAC. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video and if you agreed with what I said, uh, let me know by clicking that like button and boosting the YouTube algorithm so maybe they can see this video and make changes for the better. And make sure to subscribe and click that bell notification so that you don't miss the next one because the next one is going to be interesting. Peace.